Let the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's wonderful to be gathered together wherever you are tuning in from. Delighted to be able to worship together on this morning. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I have loved to do throughout my life is to, to fish. Um, this probably is not a surprise. As, uh, there's, I think there's been several sermons where I've mentioned that before. Um, but when you think about fishing, you know, the things that kind of come to mind, the memories that are kind of imprinted in my mind, I've got a, a picture from when I was probably eight or nine years old and went with my, my father to a place called Dry Run Creek in Arkansas, and, and it's a, off of a hatchery, and you've got to be under 15 to fish there. And so I've got a gigantic rainbow trout. It's like the biggest thing that I caught, you know, for many, many years. And that's the thing about fishing. It's about catching the biggest fish. And so when I got here, um, Elliot took me to Smith Lake to go fishing for, for striped bass, and I've got a monster striped bass. And then um, I think the next year I went down to Florida and I caught a gigantic redfish, and those are the pictures that I, you know, want to show everybody of catching the biggest fish. So two weeks ago, um, family's on vacation and um, my children are nine and seven now, so they're at that age when they can participate in things um, that, that dad does as well. And so we book a, a, a few hour fishing trip out in the Gulf, um, in, in one of the bays, and we're going fishing for redfish. And when you, you fish in this way, it's very different than the kind of hunting aspect. You um, Often what the guide will do is he'll take in this case, it was squid, and you kind of throw the squid parts out there, and then you hook your, 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 your fishing rod up, and you, and you cast out there, and you kind of um, plant them on the back of the boat, and you're just waiting for action. So the whole family's out there, and all of a sudden, boom, one of the rods, one of the rods is, is, is shaken, and Jack, Jack jumps up, and he runs back, and he goes, it's mine, it's mine, and he grabs, grabs the fishing pole. And I have to reach around um, behind him like a, a bear hug. And I've got my hands on the rod with my fingers in between the reel. And he is cranking, he is just cranking that as hard as he can. And I'm kind of pulling the rod back and then he'll, he'll, he'll reel down. And we fight for like seven or eight minutes and he is just screeching with joy and enthusiasm and glee. And all of a sudden we pull out this like 20 pound plus redfish and he is just screaming excited. And he's kind of grossed out from a fish that big too so he's kind of <laughs> scared holding it but we help him hold it. And then all of a sudden the next rod hits and Bailey, Bailey jumps up and she's, it's mine, it's mine. And so same thing, Bailey's like doesn't weigh as much as one of those fish and so I've got my arms around her and she starts doing the same thing, and after maybe 10, 15 minutes, um, we're able to get that fish, and it's 26 pounds. And so we've got to hold it while Bailey's holding it for the picture, because of course you've got to have a picture of the big fish. Then all of a sudden the next one hits, and Ann runs back there, and she jumps in, she's fighting it. She's fighting it, and finally Ann gets the fish, and Ann's got this monster fish in the picture. And the fishing's slowing down. I think all three of them probably at the same time, they kind of look at me and they're like, but John, you don't, you don't have a fish. Isn't that, you know, we've, we've got to catch another fish. And I'm sitting there with the biggest grin on my face because this, this is really the first time this has happened. It hits me. There's no way. Next fish that hits, I'm giving it to one of the kids. This is the most wonderful thing in the world. Because here, I mean, like, we know this. Like, being able to have somebody else, especially, especially the younger ones in our lives, like, the people that we love and care about, them experiencing joy is way better than any of the joy that we could experience. Like watching the thrill of excitement on their face way better than any fishing that I have ever had. Because to be able to share joy with someone else 
is, is much greater than any joy that we could receive. I don't think that's just the case for joy. I think that is the way that we are meant to be in life. Um, we have this kind of tension in, in, in our service today. Um, it's subtle. Uh, we haven't, since we're doing, still doing morning prayer, the, the prayer that we're going to pray um, towards the end of the service, the collect for the day, what that prayer does is it kind of surmises the, the, the readings. Um, and what it's saying is, is a prayer for us to receive something. Saying, pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you in all things and above all things may obtain your promises. I think that that's a part of the faith is that we, we seek out Christian community, we seek out God because we're hoping that our lives are transformed, that we receive that blessing that God promises. I mean, it's that part of that, I, I do it every, at the end of every service, or when, when Catherine or Becky offer the blessing at the end of the service, I'll cross myself like I've received some kind of blessing. Like we, we come here to receive something. But it's interesting that, that we're in this season of Easter, we're actually at the, the last Sunday before Jesus leaves earth and the kind of the telling of the great 50 days of Easter. And, and so the reading that we hear is Jesus gathered with his friends and disciples on the night before he dies. And he's been trying to help them understand that he's not going to be with them much longer in the same form. I mean, we know, we know it happens, so it's interesting. Um, and, and he's... And, and they've been fighting about who can receive the greatest blessing. They've been fighting about who's going to sit at the right and the left. And he's like, look, you guys are missing the point. There's no greater gift to give than to be able to lay down your life for your friends. That's what we hear today. There is nothing greater than we can receive than to be able to give the gift of life. It's not about what we receive. The, the challenge of, I think the challenge of the last, you know, 15 months for me has been how selfish, how easy it is to become very selfish in the midst of a pandemic, to worry about what it is that I need, to worry about the protections that I'm supposed to receive, to worry about how all these things are impacting my life. And yet, what our faith is really inviting us to do is what is it that we're able to give? Is it joy? Is it the listening ear that when we walk with one of our friends that is in pain or in grief, we can give them the gift of, of listening and love that is much larger than walking that moment alone? when we reach out in love in a way that is not about ourselves, we find joy and purpose. Um, I know I have to be cautious about not shaming y'all into a little acts of love and service, but I am excited that we're getting to a place of having some new opportunities. Uh, a week from yesterday, this coming, um, no, two weeks, on the, 20, um, on the 22nd, uh, we're going to begin our, our building of a new laundry room at Grace and Woodlawn. Um, and we're going to, every, the last Saturday of the month throughout the summer until that project's hopefully complete, we'll um, continue to go out and work and build a laundry facility at Grace Works. And then um, hopefully we'll be able to launch our laundry love ministry um, as frequently as a week or, or every other week or so in that community. Um, we have opportunities to cook and, and provide meals on Mondays and Fridays in, in Avondale. Um, community Kitchens is about to kind of kick back up. Um, we're going to need volunteers for the Vacation Bible School program that's going to be running on Wednesday nights um, this summer. There's lots of opportunities, and there's, there's thousands of opportunities in the community, and, and lots of y'all are involved. The challenge is to is to learn to see how life-giving those are, to be stretched, 
to see that while God is indeed blessing us, the real gift of life comes when we love one another. To learn to see the joy that we can find not by what we accumulate, but not by what we build up, by what we share. That's, that's what Easter is about, to see the resurrection. We're still in those 50 days to experience it, to live it. And we do it by laying down our life for each other. May we be emboldened to see the opportunities at hand because we have some, some important work to do, as we always do, of reaching out in love. May we find it the richest of all the ways to live. Indeed, God blessing us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.